Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, she has no right to divulge confidential information, and why is there slavery in general? The second story, Karen was outraged that the ambulance was not doing its job. The third story, what the heck is with people trying to make those in the service industry lose their jobs all the time? The first story is, the Karen who said I supported slavery. At the time this happened, I was working for an ambulance service in a farming community, and I worked at the office. I was a 28-year-old white female. This is important later. My job included answering the phone, organizing transportation, making sure that our reports were sent to billing and so on. I had been at the time working in the medical field in some way for several years, so it was nice not to be on the front lines and just take a back seat to the crazy. Or so I thought. It started on a clear mid-spring day. I had just gotten to the office and it was about 8.30 in the morning when I gathered the run reports and sat down at my computer. Now, if you don't know what a run report is, it's basically a report explaining the incident that my crews were called out on. The typical who, what, where, when, why, and how. I would also get a paper from the hospital to ensure I had the patient's information right, so I dealt with a lot of personal information. So I always had to keep in mind HIPAA laws living in the US and our state laws conserving this information. Meaning if I was not using it, then it better be locked away and not just laying around. So there I was in the office that I shared with the operations manager and director. It was just one large room. This morning I had not talked with my crew members yet, as a few were sleeping. Some went for breakfast, and the other crew was on a call. I had just started reading a report when Karen came in. Now this was not a normal Karen. She was a small older woman with her hair in a bun, and seemed really sweet at first. The manager noticed her first and asked if I was expecting someone, as I usually had one or two people come in every month to pay a bill, or we might have someone coming in to sell something. I looked out my window as we sat at different sides of the door, both at a window, and told him no. He said he'd be in the bay if I needed him, as he had to check on supplies, and I waited for her to come in. When she came in, she had a very sweet temperament, and I of course was ready to be of help in any way possible. The following was our conversation. Me, good morning, how can I help you? Karen, good morning to you too. I was hoping you could help me get some information. Me, I'll do what I can. What brings you in today? Karen, well last night I came upon an accident and I was the first to respond. I was hoping I could get the name and some information on the person I helped. Now I was a little confused, as I had not even looked at the reports yet for last night, and I was taken a little aback by such a request. Me, oh my. Well first, thank you for helping, but I'm afraid I cannot give you any information on this person, as I'm not allowed to give out information to anyone who can't prove their next of kin. Karen, oh I don't want any personal information, I just want a name and to know where they took him so I could visit him. Just to let you know, this is personal information, what I can't give. I was starting to get a bit frustrated at this point, as I'm a private person, and I would never want my information given out. Also, the fact that for the last several years, every kind of medical profession has cracked down on this rule, and why this woman still doesn't get it is beyond me. Me. I'm sorry ma'am, I can't tell you anything. You see, I haven't been here long. Also, I have no idea what incident you're talking about, and it's against the law for me to tell you. I could do jail time and lose my medical license. I was and still am a state certified nursing assistant. I worked my butt off to get that license, and was not about to lose it to appease Karen. So, I fold my hands on top of the paperwork on my desk, trying to look more official. I know that if that report is done, it's in that pile, so I don't want her to get any ideas. Karen, I don't see what all the fuss is about. I just want to visit with them and share Jesus with them. You know they could have been spared just for me to talk to them. Do you know Jesus? There it is. Yup, I'm in the Bible Belt and I was in church since I was in my mom's womb, so I know plenty about Jesus. Now, I know where she's going with her right-wing thinking. I've also heard this line my entire life. I know it's time to live up to the second part of my nickname, which is Bear, and dig in my heels. This woman is not going to let this go, and neither was I. Me, yes, actually I do. I also have a degree in Biblical Studies. It still isn't going to change anything. I still have to follow the law and do my job. So I'm sorry I can't give you any information. Is there anything else I can do for you? Karen, well, if you know Jesus, I don't see the problem with you giving me the information. We're supposed to visit the sick, and I just wanted to know how he's doing. Are there some people in the back? I could ask one of them. Me, actually, I can't let you back there, as it's staff only, and they're all resting or out on calls. That's true, as the group that was at breakfast had gotten a call for an emergency. I was listening to the radio, so I knew that was true. Karen, so you won't give me the information? 
Me. No, as I explained, I can't. It's the law and I want to keep my job. Karen. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that we should follow God's law or man's law? So, you know, this is a trick question. According to the Bible, it's both. You can message me for more info, as I know I might lose some of you in this argument. Just remember I spent the better part of my life at this point studying the Bible and spent three years in college tearing it apart, so I was ready for this one. Me. Both. Jesus even said give to Caesar what is Caesar's and never told his followers to disobey the law. Karen. So you're telling me that if there was still slavery and a slave ran away then you would take the slave back and support slavery? Think about that. As she began to walk towards the door, sounding more stupid than ever, according to my family. I went from frustrated to completely peeved. I also looked to my right where there was a door going to our first bay and noticed the manager looking in, seeing I had everything under control, and then he left. In reality, it was different. I was seeing red. I had done a lot of research on my family history, so I had plenty of ammo. Also, I was completely done with this entitled woman and her baloney. Me, don't you even bring that into this. My adopted brother is black, and I had a family that fought in the Civil War to free the slaves. I was also taught to not see color. Also, I have ancestors that were also slaves, so you have no right to say that. Yes, I called on my Jewish ancestors for this card. I know the law and I know that it's my job to keep this information private. I'm not giving it to you. Karen. Well, then why don't you just get the information and we can go visit them together? Me. No. I've told you no. And even if I went with you, I could still get in trouble. If there's nothing else, I think it's time for you to go. The manager is now hovering at the door and I was told later a crew member noticed the look on my face and went to get him. I can't hide my feelings. My face is too loud and my guys knew the looks. Karen. Well, I hope if anything were ever to happen to you that you'll have someone there. I still can't believe you won't let me know anything. That is not what Jesus would want. I can't remember if there was more. I was so mad. I was shaking. And after she left, the manager came in and asked me what happened. I told him and he said I should have come to get him. I told him I was afraid she was going to look through the paperwork, so I stayed. He admitted to seeing the look on my face and backing away just enough to where he could watch and not be seen. That butthead. I was glad it was over. Believe it or not, later she came back and got the same runaround from the manager, but he gave her the basic answer. We hear he's going to be okay. She of course brings up what she did and that she now wants to be a volunteer firefighter in some kind of thing they used to do before HIPAA laws. Apparently they would put in the paper who was in the hospital and where so people could send cards. Anyway, she was told by him as well we can't say anything and again she was gone. I was assured that even if she did try to volunteer, they would not keep her for long. I would say that legend says that she's still dropping by to get the information, but unfortunately we closed down a few months later. I haven't been back, so if she's still trying to find out that information, I will never know. The second story is… Karen. Move your ambulance. You're wasting taxes. Me equals me. MP equals my partner. TR equals trainee on his second week. K equals Karen. It happened this Saturday evening at around 7.30 p.m. I was about to start my night shift with MP and our trainee. After checking the ambulance, we were on the way to get some things from the supermarket. As we arrived, we parked on the site near the containers for glass. The owner of the market is okay with that. He was a volunteer firefighter a few years ago. He knows us and we didn't block anything or anyone. The most important thing is that we would roll out fast if a call comes in. However, me and MP left the ambulance to buy some things. TR didn't need anything and wanted to make a phone call, so he stayed at the vehicle. Man, he regrets it. We came 20 minutes later back and saw a woman talking to TR. It didn't bother us first. Often people are interested in our new ambulance or just have some questions. As we were getting closer, we heard what was going on. A wild Karen appeared. K. So you guys are staying here illegally and wasting time and taxpayer money instead of working? TR. I told you already. We're ready to go if a call comes in. But as long as it's quiet, we're able to get some things for the station. K. Listen to me. You guys have to wait at your station until the phone rings. I'll call your chief and inform him. Me and MP arriving and stashing our things in the ambulance. K. Oh, there are the adults. Are you having a corona party? Me. Could you please change your tone? We're not your children. K. Look at him. Points at TR. He's nearly a child. Me. No, he's an ongoing paramedic and you need to have respect. K. Rolls her eyes. Whatever. That's not my point. I wanted to let you know that I'm going to report you for illegal parking and wasting taxpayers' money for trips to the market. Me. Like my colleague explained, we have our pagers on the belt. It rings, we run to the car and get to the call. K interrupts me. But you have still illegally parked your vehicle. You're blocking the other spaces. I think I need to tell the owner and the police about that. There was nothing near us, just a larger way for delivery trucks and some glass containers. These were also not blocked by us. Me. If you want to do that, go ahead. But you'll waste your time. The owner knows that we park here. 
Kay sighs and rolls her eyes. That's a lie. All right, time for the manager. You'll see what'll happen. As she went in, we asked TR WTF has happened. She just took pictures of him in the ambulance and interrupted his phone call by loudly starting to tell him that he's doing something illegal. He explained everything at least three times to her before we came. We laughed about it and told him that he'll get used to this kind of people. Few moments later, Kay came with the manager and pointed at us like a DEA dog on a bag of cocaine. Kay, can you see what I mean? They're blocking the traffic, without any call or other reason. It's illegal. Manager equals M comes over and speaks to us. M, hey, guys, you're the new shift, I hope? MP, hey, manager's first name? Yeah, didn't have any calls yet. M, this lady told me you've parked illegally and you're blocking my other customers. MP, no, we're just at the spot that you told me and other colleagues about. It's okay here, you said, right? M, yeah, that's fine. K in a real disgusting tone. How can you support this behavior? They're wasting taxpayers' money. M, I allowed them to park here. Their vehicle is too big for the normal lines, and they need to go quick if a call comes in. K, they're currently not on a call, they're just hanging out here. M, and they need supplies too. If a call comes in, they'll act fast. K, that's it. I'm telling the police and your chief about this. MP, all right, I'll give you his number and you let us alone? K, what? You know what, just give it to me. MP takes a paper and writes the number of our chief on it. MP, here you go. I even wrote the time, date, and ambulance number on it. K takes the paper, says nothing. M, I hope you know who you're upsetting with this. You clearly don't know what it means to go on a call where you need to decide in seconds what to do or someone could die. K, and that's their job. M, not only a job, think about it. So would you mind leaving this people alone? And if you keep that behavior up, I won't be interested in any more business with you. K rolls her eyes and walks away. M, sorry for that. Some people are just a bit special. If your chief says anything, he can call here and I'll tell him what I saw. Me, never mind. We're used to special people in this job. M, I'm into that. People are getting insane these days. After that, we drove back to the station and told later the other ambulance crews about it. They all busted out laughing and shake their heads. And the last story is, I want you fired. My extended family lives out east, and one of my cousins owns a pizzeria with her husband. Now, my cousin's husband is an Italian from Italy, and my cousin is 100% American Italian. In other words, they're loud, they're almost always yelling, and often family can be found there. I live out west, but we happened to be visiting for a week and had gathered all the cousins, aunts, uncles, etc. In total, there was 30 or more of us all piled into two tables in the back. Now, it's not unusual for us to pitch in when we eat there. We'll help wait on the other tables while we're waiting to grab menus, etc. Most folks are regulars and are used to the chaos, but cue an older couple that saunter in. She had RBF. He looks like a stick's been permanently inserted in his rectum. I grabbed two menus. Have a seat. Someone will be right with you. What? You're not going to bring us to our table? The lady barks. So I summon up a smile and point to a table right near them. Here you go, folks. And then I go and sit back down as our food's coming out. My cousin's daughter, who is working that night, goes to tend to the couple. I hear the woman say something to my cousin, but I'm too busy stuffing my face. I go to get my elderly great on a coke, and the RBF grabs my arm. Just so you know, I let your boss, my cousin, know what a bad employee you are, and you're going to be fired. My cousin then comes up to me and says, oh yeah, you're fired. I grin, shrug, and walk back off to the table. Yeah, the look on her face was priceless. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.